Okay, I'm going to show you how to remove the spindle from a bridge port. Uh, there's various reasons you have to do that. This one is missing the drive. We're rebuilding it right now, but uh, it doesn't matter in this case. Uh, the, the process is the same. Uh, what we have to do on this one is replace the uh, collet key. But I'm just going to take the spindle entirely out uh, and show you how to do it. Uh, the first thing you have to do, I've moved the coil down uh, an inch or so and locked it well. On the back here is a set screw. Um, let me back up. This entire spindle is held into there by this, this locking collar. Uh, that's the only thing that holds it in there. This set screw secures that collar to keep it from backing off. Uh, so the first thing you want to do, and you can see where it's right there in the back, is back that set screw off, or just take it out entirely. Don't lose it. Notice it's, it's a pointed set screw because it's holding it's locking the threads in. Uh, once you do that, this collar unscrews. And while it would be nice to have the proper spanner to do it, it doesn't matter. This, this collar should only be a snug fit. It shouldn't be super tight. It actually, uh, when you put it in there, you hope to have a little gap when it seats. Uh, the other thing on a true bridge port, this is standard right hand threads, so we're going to unscrew it counterclockwise. A lot of clones, for reasons only known to the clone makers, have left hand threads. So if it doesn't start to unscrew real quick, turn around and try it the other direction, unless you've got a real bridge board. Uh, I'm just going to use a punch and then one of the one of those spanner holes. Loosen this guy up. be very tight at all. Once we do that, we're going to unscrew all 40 million threads. By the way, there's a lot of debate, apparently, on uh, preload of the spindle bearings. This collar has nothing to do with that. This is should be snug up against the entire spindle assembly. All it does is locate the spindle. Now, if this is loose, you will get up and down play, but it has nothing to do with the bearing preload. You just want to snug it up in there. Like I said, it should hit the bearings before it actually touches the bottom of the quilt by about five or ten thousandths. Um, anyhow, that's the only thing that holds it in. The easiest way to get these things out is to stick the draw bar. It's, it's, a, it's a loose press bed. Stick the draw bar in there. Okay. It up. It's too silent, but you're actually not doing any damage to anything, and this is far preferable pounding on the end of the spindle shaft. If you do pound on it, put a piece of wood up there and don't wail on it, just pound on it enough get the thing out. glitch in this. Occasionally, the bolt that holds this stop nut on is sticking too far into the quill and it will catch on this top bearing. So you've got to disassemble the power down feed enough to take this stop nut loose. Uh, most of them that doesn't happen, but it can happen. If it doesn't come out, if it just sort of hangs there, then that's what's happening. Don't force anything. Don't force anything. Uh, yeah, this is a spindle. The collet key we're going in this one's just worn out. That's the collet key. It's a, it's a little, actually two set screws that protrude a little bit into the, the, the R8 bore and engage the slot on, on your collet. Uh, back to the preload question. The preload on these is set. There's two spacers in here. These are the spindle variants, the expensive ones. 
There are two spacers in here. One of them spaces the inner race, one of them spaces the outer race. Normally they are exactly the same size, um, so the preload is what the factory intended, the bearing factory. Uh, and that is held onto the spindle by this nut on the top. And that's what sets the preload on the spindle bearings, is this nut through this spacer and through these two spacers holding the whole thing together. This bearing is a standard bearing, all it's doing is holding the top of the thing. Um, but these two are the expensive spindle bearings. So take a lot of care with the spindle. Um, and that's, that's about all of the spindle things. Uh, again, when you put this in, well, I'll, I'm going to put it back in here in a minute. So, uh, we'll, we'll show you. Okay, we're going to change the trolley key. This is what it looks like. It's a, it's a very fine thread. It's like a quarter 28, or I actually think it's a quarter 32. It's not a standard set screw. Uh, it's very fine thread, and it's, it's got a square end on it. Um, the collet key actually protrudes a little bit into the bore, into the taper, and it engages this slot on your collet. Now, that does not drive the collet. The tension on the taper is what actually drives your tool and all of that. The main thing with this collet key is, um, and the slot, if the collet is stuck, or actually if it's not stuck, and uh, you try and uh, undo the drawbar, it may end up just spinning in there. You'll never get it out, or you're going to have a hard problem. So this just holds this end as you unscrew the drawbar. Uh, again, it does not drive, if, you, if it's driving it, then you've got something wrong with the tapers. Um, now this key fits here. Now I'm taking this spindle out, but you can actually do this inside the machine. Just move the spindle down far enough that you can get to it. And of course it's, a, it's, it's, it's about a, a, maybe a quarter of an inch above the bottom of the quilt. So it's another good bridge for the innovation. I've seen a few of them you can get to without doing anything with the spindle, but that's not the rule. Uh, there are two pieces to this. One is this little locking screw, and the other one is the collet key itself. Now this one is completely trashed. You can see there's not much left of it. So I'm just going to put a new one in there because we happen to have a supply of new ones. And when you put this in, you want it to protrude now yeah, maybe 40 thousandths. Not even close. So you're going to adjust it until it's protruding about 40 thousandths. Take a collet, make sure it'll go in there, and then number one, it stops it from turning, and number two, it doesn't drag on the collet. I normally like to check it with two or three of them, because of course there's different, different brands and manufacturers and sizing tape. Once you get that to the right depth, <laughs> the fun part is getting this little walking thing on there. without dropping it. And the problem is that the hex on this one goes all the way through. Well, that's one of the problems. So if you put your wrench in there too far, you're just going to be turning the key you just put in there. So you can see even here, it's little pain. So just barely put your wrench in there. Crank it down until it touches the key you just put in there. And you want to tighten this thing without turning the other one. So hopefully it'll work. I normally don't put the other one in quite far enough so that uh, if it turns a little bit, it's alright. Again, check it. Make sure 
so that it does not drag on the collars. And I still suggest using two or three or four or five or whatever. Okay, and that's all there is. Again, you can do that by just dropping the spindle down enough with the method I just showed you to, uh, to access it and it can be in there. Um, I'm going to put this spindle back in. Show you a couple of the tricks to doing that. Again, it's a press fit. Now, when you put the spindle in, there is supposed to be a little oil washer, a oil felt up at the top of this. You're going to have to align it. You're also going to, if the drive is on there, you're going to have to align it to the splines that are in the back here um, in order for it to drive. We don't have that problem on this one. So, hopefully, and I, I need a shorter block. lined up and you want to make sure it's lined up and then we're just going to press it in by moving the coil down over it until it's snug and it, it should this is supposed to be precision stuff so it, it should actually fit in there pretty snugly. Okay, uh, that set screw I just talked about that, that holds this collar in or keeps it from rotating, there is a, a little detent on the screw. Um, what I normally do, and this only works sometimes, What I normally do, and this only sometimes works, is I'll file a little mark here where that detent is so we can line it up. I know from past experience if you use a Sharpie or something to do that it's going to get worn off by the time it's in there. Uh, anyhow, let's screw this back in. Again, bridge port is going to be standard right hand. A clone may very well be left handed, Chris. We want to screw it up until it's seated against the entire bearing assembly, and then we're going to snug it up just enough either to line up that screw. If you haven't messed with anything else, it should line up and it will save you. If not, you just want to drill another little detent, take, a, take an electric drill and a small drill bit and just touch those threads just enough that that set screw will have there. But once it hits the bearings, you don't want it very tight. Uh, actually, hand tight would almost be good enough. So I'm going to see where I'm setting the hair. No. Just a little bit more. things with this set screw. Um, if it's not lined up with that little depression in the threads, it will probably stick out a little bit, which will stop the coil from going up all the way. 
The other thing is you only want this set screw slightly tight. Uh, very common problem, if that set screw is too tight, is it actually distorts the quill. Remember this is a high precision fit in here. It actually distorts the quill enough that it will bind in the last one to two inches of travel. And if you have one that's doing that, that's probably what's wrong with it. But anyhow, that's all there is to putting the spindle in and out. And And again, for that debate that's happening, this thing has nothing to do with the bearing preload. So, uh, you know, you just want that snug plus just a little tiny bit. And like I say, ideally, this one didn't, wasn't ideal. Ideally, you want maybe uh, oh, two to five thousandths clearance between the nut and the bottom of the quill. That, that ensures that it's seated on the bearing assembly and not just in here, because that does affect the up and down movement of it. And I have seen them, uh, this one's close, uh, I have seen them where this doesn't quite hit the bearings and you have about two thousandths of, of play in this direction. Um, so anyhow, that's the spindle. Have fun. May all your machining be rotary.